Welcome to the Toka Backstage Podcast. Join Toka's Executive Director, Chris Wolf, in conversations with the artists and people behind the scenes of the Torrance Cultural Arts Foundation's performances and events. Hi, welcome to another edition of Toka Backstage. This is Chris Wolf, the Executive Director of the Torrance Cultural Arts Foundation. It's uh, my pleasure today to speak with Mark Coleman from Paul's Photo in Torrance. He also runs the Creative Photo Academy. And it was just a great conversation about how to keep your creativity alive, great tips to take great photos, um, and just a fun talk. It has nothing to do with performing arts, but uh, I think that uh, in these dark times, it's always good to keep the creative juices flowing, and, and he's the guy to do it. So I encourage you to check this out, and also check him out on Facebook. And um, when things get better, go see him at Paul's Photo. Hope you enjoy. So it's my pleasure to have Mark Coleman here um, from Paul's Photo and the Creative Photo Academy. Is that right? That's correct, Chris. Thank you. So um, I have questions because I've been, I've been actually, and anyone who's listening or watching who isn't following you on social media should because you do some incre incredible stuff to give people some simple, fun things to do with their cameras and their phones. Um, but what do you see is the biggest issue with people and photos, like for them getting it wrong? Today, I, so most people who are not trained in photography don't think about their pictures. They just snap and then wonder why it doesn't come out the way they want. They just press the button. And it's just like cooking or painting or, or any craft like that. You have to put some thought into it. And one of the things, you know, I talk to my basic students about the creative triangle and the technical triangle and how we use those to build a picture. So the creative triangle is like this on the top with the story on the top, the subject, and the elements of the picture and how you arrange that. So what is the story? What story am I trying to tell, Chris, right? And then what is the subject of the picture? How, who is in or what is in the picture? And what are the creative or, and the, the, the environmental elements that are part of that picture that need to be considered? And then we use the technical triangle, the shutter speed, the f-stop, the ISO, to control the camera to make the picture what we envision. So if you're using a phone with no control of those settings, you have no control over those settings. If you're using a real camera in auto, fully auto mode, you're letting the camera determine those. So does the picture come out okay most of the time? Yes. Does it match what you want ever? Very rarely, because you haven't put any thought or effort into it. Does that does that make sense? Absolutely. Well, absolutely. I, I, I have to confess, I, I have like this much training in photography, just enough to make me stupid. Because when I was in junior high, I, I, I mean, my big claim to fame is a picture I took in junior high ended up in that junior high school yearbook of you know, awesome. my drama teacher. Um, yeah. And I, I took like a class in photography, never could master the rolling of the film onto the uh -huh. link. Yeah, um, but luckily uh, we don't have to do that anymore. I mean, so with a digital camera, you don't have to go to the darkroom anymore. You can do it all, you know, on your computer at home. You know, my MacBook is my digital darkroom and my Canon printer is my digital darkroom. So it's, it's so much simpler today, Chris. But so you've done, you do both. I mean, you've done the film and oh, you yeah, do, do, yeah, yeah. do you... F and forgive me for anyone listening or watching that that does this. I mean, it's like, but do you think it takes the the automatic the digital stuff takes the tools of the professional and puts it in the hands of the amateur? So you get a lot of people thinking that they're photographer, for, for, like great photographers. In all actuality, all they're doing is messing up photographs. No, not at all. I mean, everybody makes. So for me, if you're happy with the picture. I'm happy with the picture where I get involved on the camera store side is when you're not happy with your picture 
and it's a gear problem. It's an equipment problem. It's, you know, if it's a, I don't understand the medium, I don't understand how to work it. That's the creative photo Academy side, you know, where we're working on the pictures and we're building the pictures. So, well, and there's two equal parts to it. So Chris, your training in art gives you a real big leg up in the photography world because all you need to do is work on the mechanics of how to work the camera. Right. Right. You know, I deal with a lot of engineers who really love to work the camera, love to work the numbers and they struggle with the, they struggle with the mechanics of how, of how to make a good picture. So. I mean, for me, it's like, I, I always sense that, there's like an aesthetic eye that some people have and some people don't. It's like my daughter can take my phone out of my hands and take a picture and it's just amazing. Mm -hmm. I take my camera and I shoot it and it looks like my grandkid took my camera and shot the picture. So do you think that it's sort of an innate like sensibility for you know framing and, and whatnot or is it just, luck of the draw 50 50 so all you know any skill i mean there there are people who are born as a great athlete and you know they have a leg up on the baseball field but without training they're never going to get to the major leagues you know so you your daughter has a great eye and she can make a great picture but you know but i can train you to get you to the same place that she is. Now, her great eye is gonna mean her creative is better, but she still has to learn the skill. And you, Chris, who struggle with the creative, we can work through that and, 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 and nurture that and, and encourage that and build it so that you, know, you can learn it and it can be taught, just like well, anything. Let's let's talk about the create the because there's Paul's photo, which is a brick and mortar uh, camera shop. Correct. And can people? I mean, I I don't even know. Does does film still exist? Can people take absolutely? Film? So there. So Paul's photo is three independent businesses that run together. So first is the camera store, Paul's photo, where we sell cameras, equipment, help you with your purchases, all that. Then there's the lab at Paul's photo where we develop films, scan images, print photos, make wall enlargements, I mean, all that kind of stuff for the, the photographer who wants to share their work or for anybody who wants to share their pictures. And then there's the Creative Photo Academy where it's all about inspiration and experience and education and you know, getting a better picture. So the, crea the, the Academy, is that like, classes online is it something because i noticed i mean from what i've seen and from your posts on social media i mean you basically give lessons on how to do some great things is that something people go to you to say okay sign me up on the academy is it as like a formal thing or is it just absolutely so we have a so we have two in in the academy proper we have a gallery for our student work and we have two classrooms one classroom holds about 20 people. One holds about 75 people. You know, those are inactive right now because of the shutdown. Right. You know, but once we come back, those will be active and people will be coming to classes from, you know, G Mark, I just got a camera, which end do I look through <laughs> to, you know, people who are fairly accomplished in our advanced and master's program, you know, who are, you know, making money at photography, who are having their photographs published, you know, all the way through. So you know, we start out with beginning classes, which are basically what are the buttons and what are the numbers mean. Then we try to give every, get everybody into our photo boot camp, which is our most popular class. It's our six week, go through all the settings in the camera, go through the creative steps, go through the, what do the numbers mean? What are the creative photography tools and tips and techniques that you need? And then after boot camp, you go to intermediate and on to advanced and then to masters. And the classes are both live in person, which is suspended right now because of the closure, and virtual online. And so you can do it however you like and whichever experience you want. You know, the great thing about the online classes these days is, you know, you, you are sitting at home 
and you're part of the class, right? So you don't physically have to come to the academy to do it, you know, and it makes it, people are very excited about that, you know, so that's new for us in the last six months is having the classes virtually. Um, I still prefer having people come so we can see them so we can have the relationship, you know, we can have a discussion, but the online classes are just, they're, they're soaring for us. They're doing very well. And for people who are like shut in at home right now, like, like everybody, um, and who may want to like try their hand at taking pictures, what, what would you say is like a good starting practice thing to do? Just go out and shoot it. Well, I want, so you, you should probably start with my be creative series online. So for the, so today is day 62 of the closure here in California. So for this will be the 62nd day I've posted a tip and a video and a picture that I've done in and around the house. So you can find those at pulsephoto.com and look at the top. It says be creative. You can find that on Facebook with my name, Mark Komen on Facebook. You can find that on Instagram with my name, Mark Komen and so it's a video, a, you know, two to five minute video on a cool technique, a, a cool idea. And then the picture that I shot when I did that. And you start with those. And if you start with day one and move your way through, it's, they're a lot of fun. Yeah, and, they are. you know, I've got people following me from around the world. It's exciting. And, and it's just, it's one of those things that just keeps growing and growing and growing. And it's, that's a good place to start to see if you like doing this. And I've had a lot of people call me and email me and say, you know, Mark, I'd given up my camera, you know, I've been using my phone, but I dusted off my camera and I was taking some of the pictures and this is really fun. And I started it, Chris, because, you know, when we all got told we had to stay at home, I mean, every, I freaked out, you freaked out, we all freaked out. I mean, what the heck are we going to do, right? So to me, photography is a light. Photography is something that we can do, you know, and some of us can sing, some of us can dance, some of us can paint, some of us can do other things. And, but I have not met anybody who could not become a good photographer. I didn't say great, I didn't say world class, but good enough so that, you know, if you want to go out and be creative, you can be creative. If you want to go for a walk around the neighborhood and find some cool, interesting stuff, you can do that. If you're out with your friends, you can make some great pictures of them, you know, to share socially what you're doing and have some success with it. You know, my thing is all about success. I want my students to have success. I want my customers to have fun. I want you to meet your needs and your goals. And one of the things that, you know, as a instructor, so I wear three hats, right? So I'm a photographer, you know, who's an artist and a creative person. I'm a, a businessman who runs a camera store, and I'm a teacher who wants to inspire my students. And I have to remember which hat I'm wearing. You know, as the artist, you know, you have these lofty goals and these lofty ideals. As the business owner, it's all about nuts and bolts and about the as the instructor, you really want to inspire. And all that aside, I just want people to be happy and have fun, you know, because very, none of us are going to make a living doing photography. I mean, of my students and customers, there's a handful who do. The other thousands don't, and we're doing it for fun, you know, because you're doctors and lawyers and engineers and moms and dads and grandmas and grandpas who want to take pictures. But you don't want to be a hack. You want to be successful. You want to have good pictures. You want your family and friends to say, ooh and ah. And that's the biggest reward for most of us is having family and friends say, wow, I want to take a picture like that. Yeah, well, I, I think there's like a, like you're, there's a big difference between the, the picture that you have in your phone and the picture you want to have mounted and framed and put up. Absolutely. On yes. And that's, that's why we use real cameras, not a phone, because you can't make the phone make it a big one on the wall. You know, you can't do this, right? So that, that's our fam, my family's vacation to Japan last year, right? And just, I want the pictures up. I want them big. I want people to enjoy them. And every time the kids come over, they just, it brings us back to this amazing trip we took together. So.
Those are great photographs. Thank you. I, I was admiring them in your background. Is that a sushi? Yeah. Looks like yeah, sushi. Yeah, so, okay, so, right. So we went to a sushi restaurant. That was at Skiji Market. So you go to Skiji Market early in the morning in Tokyo, and unfortunately it's changed. It's not there anymore. But outside the Skiji Market, which is the, Jap the fish market in Tokyo, there's like a, um, a, a mall with little shops. And there's a sushi restaurant right there. Wow. So the guy's getting the fish that they're getting right out of the market. So you have to go to the market. We were there at like six in the morning. And we toured the market till like nine o'clock. And by then we were tired and hungry. So we had sushi and beer at nine in the morning. It was <laughs> awesome. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So um, as you know, what, what we do is we do a lot of performance, you know, performances and, and um, we deal with like, young performers who want to sort of follow that career path. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I've found is actually two things. One is on social media, there's this tendency for people, especially women to make the, the pursed lips, the, the kiss face, you know, as, as they're, they're holding their selfies. Why do you think that is? It's a, it's a style. It's a, so, you know, in social media, most of that is driven by a celebrity, that this celebrity does it this way, and everybody wants to do it that way. And that's all well and good. I don't mind, you know, people are doing, you know, that's the picture. That's the way you see yourself. That's what you want to, that's what you want to share. You know, that's, that's everybody, everybody has their own voice. And I want yeah. people to express their voice. I want people to express their vision. And I want people to tell their story because that's what the camera is amazing for. I mean, and the phone works, you know, but a, a real camera does a much better job because it allows me to tell my story. Right. Yeah. And if you see yourself all, you know, and that's what you want to share. I mean, that's, I think it's great. I think it's so exciting that people share their pictures because, and, and you know, People in photography have said, well, Mark, don't you think that Instagram and Facebook and MySpace and all the, you know, this laundry list are ruining photography? And no, it's not. It's making it better because, you know, there's a trillion pictures up, uh, uploaded. There are, you know, billions of pictures loaded every day on social media, you know, and that means people are enjoying pictures. People are having fun with it. And that's all I want. I want people to have fun. You know, and I think that's most important. And the other thing, the other question I have was for like doing f photographs on stage or of a stage mm -hmm. performance. Mm -hmm. I've always found that the lighting is really difficult to deal with, obviously, especially with a phone. For a young performer who wants to get a really good, like candid photograph of them performing, what, what would you suggest? You need a fairly sophisticated camera and lens. You're right. So, and the reason why is the stage lighting, the lighting that's made to make us look good on the stage is not appropriate lighting to take a picture. So, you know, that's why on the Broadway performances, they'll actually come in and reset the scene, you know, during a dress rehearsal or beforehand to get this, the production stills. You know, we as, you know, parents and grandparents don't have that luxury, right? So you're forced to come to the dress rehearsal or sit quietly in the back during the regular performance, and you need a fairly sophisticated camera. So my recommendation would be a full-frame digital SLR or mirrorless camera, full-frame, and the 70 to 200 2.8 lens. So that's what I recommend to all of my parents who are doing – basketball, ballet, drama, you know, um, music recitals, um, all that's the same, right? W whether it's a stage play or a, or, a, or a debate club, it's the same picture you're trying to get. You know, you have to stay relatively far back. You can't go right up to the front, so you need a telephoto lens. You need a telephoto lens that has a 2.8 aperture, so it lets in a lot of light. And you need a camera that has the full frame or large sensor with a high ISO performance. Now, I know I lost a lot of you with that talk because it's a little technical, but don't worry. Come talk to me at Pulse Photo. That's what we're there to do for you. That's my job is to help you get the pictures. And what I like to do 
is, I mean, everybody comes in today having done research on the internet on what camera they want to buy. And so most of them come in with a piece of paper with the, the camera they think they want with all the prices from all the different places, and they see it's the same and the price at Paul's photo is the same as buying it on the internet. So that's, that's fine. But then I ask them, okay, that's the price on this camera, but what do you want the camera to do? Right? Cause a camera to me is a tool. You know, it's no different than a hammer or a saw or a paring knife versus a bread knife versus a chopping knife for the chef. Right? So what is the camera going to do? What are you trying to photograph? So if you're photographing, you know, if your daughter does ballet with big jumps, you need a camera that's going to react fairly fast. So you need the low light and the fast action, right? If you're just doing drama, if it's a play, they're not moving that fast. So a moderate camera, you don't need moderate speed is okay, but you still need the low light performance and the bright lens so you can photograph under the light. And then you need to watch the play to find out when the light is not so dramatic. You know, so during a performance, if they have the strong blue light coming down to show that the person's real sad, that's going to make a horrible picture because everybody's going to be blue. So you want to wait till the light switches and you can kind of get that kind of between the scenes where the light's going from the red to the blue and you can get both on at the same time. And that makes, that's where I try to shoot the picture in that in between lighting or when the lighting is, more normal rather than dramatic light. Do you do you do you suggest people? Um, I mean, I, I know that SLRs are. I mean, when I was doing film photography, that was the thing. Mm -hmm. But then I thought that there was like with digital. I don't know what is it, digital zoom or. Mm -hmm. um, it seems that at the time, this is like fifteen years ago. I thought that was sort of like the new zoom lens, but you can't really replace an actual having a good lens. I mean, that the digital stuff doesn't work nearly as well, does it? Well, so, so Chris, you're right in that nothing has changed. So people say, well, is digital different? Well, it's different because all we have a digital sensor. We don't have film. So for years, people have been trying to make cameras smaller. And one of the ways they make, make them smaller is to build the lens into the camera so you can't change the lens, right? right? But when you do that, you're limiting yourself, right, into what kind of a picture you can take. You know, for the dramatic pictures, for high quality pictures, for, you know, top professional quality pictures, we always have a camera with a lens that's interchangeable. And then you put on the lens that gives you the picture that you want. You know, and the analogy that I use, if we were to take painting, you know, the camera is the canvas. The person is the sensor, the artist is the sensor, and the lens are the brushes. So in painting, you give, you bring different brushes to bring a different effect to the way the paint goes on to the paint canvas. Right. In a photography, you change different lenses because a different lens has a different effect and whether the effect you want is the telephoto or the wide angle or close up or portrait or interior that's why we it, having the interchangeable lens i think is so important for most people today and i go i keep thinking back to the to like comparing it to, to my industry where yeah. artists are it was at one time uh records then it went to cassettes and and eight tracks and, and then CDs and now it's back to to records. I mean well, there yeah, are a lot vinyl of, is very hot right now. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot of artists going back to vinyl. Do you see the industry, the photo photography industry sort of switching back to actual film? So film sales in twenty nineteen are up about thirty percent over twenty eighteen. You know, 2015, 2016 was the bottom of film sales. So film sales were here. It dropped, and now it's come back up. And we're doing, you know, we're developing, you know, we're probably selling 50 or so rolls of film a day at Paul's Photo, and we're developing 70 or 100 rolls of film at the lab every day. Um, and that's great, and, and I'm, I'm happy that it, to, to see it. And the thing that really is exciting to me, it's mainly young people, you know, people under 30 
who are, they busted out mom and dad's or grandma and grandpa's old camera and are using it. Um, and it, I think it's great. It's great that those cameras get to live. But as far as the total number of pictures, you know, we'll, our students will make thousands of digital pictures every day. You know, so is film growing? Yes. Is film awesome? Yes. Is it going to catch digital? Is it going to replace digital? No, because if you look at the music business, vinyl is up, but digital downloads are, you know, vinyl is here and digital downloads are up here, right? right? So it's the same thing. So do you have a preference? I like digital because it gives me more freedom. Um, I don't have to make hard choices to buy a roll of film, right? So, you know, I shot a roll of film the other day. I had a project with a friend of mine and I brought out my Hasselblad. So I got 12 exposures of 400 ISO black and white, white film. And that was it. I mean, that was the challenge that my buddy and I did, you know, 12 pictures, you know, and who could get the best shots out of the 12 pictures, right? And that's fun with film. I really like that. And one of the things is I love the cameras because you and I grew up with those cameras, right? Yeah. Those are the cameras. When we were in college or in high school, you saw a guy who had that. I mean, it's like your friend who had the Porsche, right? Oh, I want the Porsche, right? I, I, I got to get that car. And for me, it was, ooh, I want, I want a Nikon or, or I want a Hasselblad because that's the camera to get, right? And those cameras are cool and they're beautiful and I love to use them. But, you know, my Nikon Z7 with 46 megapixels I can make, I haven't been able to make a print yet from that camera that has stressed the image file. So in the, in the, at Paul's Photo, we can make 40 by 60 prints on site. So 40 by 60 doesn't even come close to eclipsing what the new cameras, my Nikon Z7 will do. Nice. So, and, you know, to make a 16 by 20 or a 20 by 24 from a Hasselblad was a stretch. I mean, you were really you were pushing the envelope on what that camera would do right. you know, to make a print that big. And from a camera that's half the size and half the weight and half the price to make a bigger print, I mean, gee whiz, you know. Well, I have to tell you, one of the reasons why I wanted to talk to you is because, sure. I mean, we've met, we've met a couple of times at the, yeah. at the arts meetings that they mm -hmm. have for the city of Torrance. And then when the whole uh, shutdown happened, um, I sent out an email to the arts groups and you responded with, and your, your, your response was kind of actually really cool. It was like, let's, let's just get people to be creative. Yeah. And, and I, I, that was such an awesome attitude that I thought, you know, it, it would be great to talk to you. And one of the things I always ask the performers, you know, at, at the end of these interviews is we have people who are looking to be, become performers and follow their, their mm -hmm. career path. But just as a creative, somebody who is an artist, whether it's a performer or a photographer or an art, a painter, what words of wisdom do you have for somebody to just during these weird, crazy times when everybody's hitting the high highs and low lows, what, what words of encouragement do you have for people to just be out, go out and be creative? So today, Chris, I would tell you to just be creative. Just don't worry about it. Just, you know, like I tell people, like I told my, I've always told my kids is there's a time for caution and there's a time just to let her rip. So this is a time to try new stuff. And who cares if it doesn't work? Who cares if nobody likes it, right? Just try it, you know, and try new things, try different things, try fun things, try, try something that you've always thought of, but you know what? Everybody's looking over my shoulder, but nobody's looking over your shoulder, but everybody's looking over your shoulder, right? Um, I think that's my best advice to you for today. But the advice I always give to, to my students and to young photographers who come to me for advice is so many people today are looking for the quick answer. They're looking to Google it and have a YouTube video show them how to do it. You know, it's been proven over the millennia that having a mentor is the best way. You know, how do you, how do you get, you know, last Friday we had Andrew Bernstein speak and he's going to talk again Friday night. So we have Andrew Bernstein is 
the LA Lakers, LA Kings photographer. He's been, he's been the official photographer at Staples Center since it opened. And Andy said, you know, somebody asked him, how did you get started? He went to the guy who was the photographer for the Lakers at the time, called him up and volunteered to help. And he took him up, you know, and he did paid his dues and he learned from the master, right? And that's one of the things at Creative Photo Academy we try to do is we try to be the guru for people. And I'm not saying you have to come to us, but you got to go to somebody. There needs to be somebody in your life, right? That you respect, you look up to, who is willing to share their sage wisdom, their years of experience that to hopefully shortcut your mistakes. I mean, as parents, isn't that what we try to do for our kids? With not much success, right? Right, right. <laughs> but we want to help you make, you know, shortcut the mistakes and, and take the easier path. That's awesome because that's that's a lot of what we do is we try and find young performers who and sort of help them and, and nurture them. But it's it's interesting that you were talking about, you know, finding that person because I know as a kid when I was growing up I wanted to be a magician. So I was mm-hmm. like I found the magic shop and that was I I spent every every free weekend down there, you know, just learning new stuff. Yeah. They don't have that. And every anymore. dollar that yeah, you yeah. had, right? Right. But they don't have things like that anymore. So you it's like you said, they people go on YouTube or they they watch videos. Yeah. There's no more connection, that one-on-one connection. Yeah. And that's it's, really missing, I think. It's sad. And so one of my fears from, you know, the new world after Corona is, you know, so retail, small business has been decimated by the Walmarts and the internet and the Amazons, right? So here's just another attack on the small business and whether it's the camera store or the fishing store or the bicycle shop or the painting supply or the dance supply, right? So, you know, for your girls who wanted to go ballet, I mean, they all probably wanted to go hang out at the ballet store, right? Right. That does the ballet lessons in the back. And the woman who owns it used to be a ballerina when she was in her twenties and now she's in her fifties and running this little business, right? And if we all get, forced away what is the world lost right right you know and you know it's just like you know it's a shame that there's not auto shop in schools anymore and i understand why not but you know if you were a car guy if you were a gearhead uh, you know a monkey wrench guy you could go down to the corner gas station and hang out with you know bob the guy at the at the service station right yeah and I just hope that that comes back for people. And as we come, as the world comes back to normal or whatever the normal is, that people follow their passions. And one of the things that I try to do is to be there for my customers, my students, my friends, because they all become, you become friends very quickly, right? When you're hanging out, talking about, excuse me, painting or dance or singing, right? You become friends because you share this passion. You share this, there's a camaraderie there that we all need as people. And uh, can you get it online? Yes. Can you do it in a Zoom meeting? Part of it. But there's nothing like hearing somebody sing in front of you. There's nothing like holding a real photograph, right? Sharing my picture on my phone is fun. But is that, you know, is it going to get it done? Okay. Is it going to bring, can I bring you to tears with a picture on my phone? Probably not. Well, and it's, not just, gonna, it's just like right now, everybody that I've talked to is like all the different arts organizations are doing streaming media. And it's like, yeah, we'll stream a couple of things, but it's, it's never, ever going to change. It's never, ever going to be a live experience and the live experience is like like you said it 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 hits you and it's an it has an emotional impact right yeah. whereas a, a, it, if you're watching something on your computer or on your television it's like yeah i think i'll go go up and get some more chips or it's like it, it, whatever it, yeah and i hope that we'll be able to come back to having live performances live events again i'm not i'm not sold it's going to be this year you know, we may be for the rest of 2020 like this over Zoom, which is okay. I mean, this is better than a phone call, right? 
yeah. but it's not as good as sitting down together and having a cocktail together. Right. Well, I, I, I hope we, we get to do that one of these days sometime soon. Anytime, Chris, anytime. So just to recap, Paul's photo is located where? Hawthorne and Pacific Coast Highway in Torrance, California. Hawthorne and PCH. Yep. So make sure you go visit. And, and if they want to learn more about the Academy. So paulsphoto.com for the camera store, creativephotoacademy.com for the classes. If they want to follow my Be Creative series, it's paulsphoto.com slash be creative. Or go to paulsphoto.com and at the top, be creative. At the Academy, they can look as you want a photo class, a photo walk, an adventure, or an online class. So now we're doing the online classes. Hopefully soon we'll have the live classes come back, you know, in all the different levels, beginning, basic, intermediate, and advanced. And I highly recommend people follow you on Facebook because those videos and those little things you do are totally awesome. And it gives you a reason to get out there and take pictures. I've got a great one coming today. I hope it works. I'm trying, I'm going to try something new today. We'll see. Okay. You know, <laughs> well, I'll go when you try out. something new, you never know. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for your time. I certainly do. You're welcome, it. Chris. It's my pleasure. And uh, we'll, I can't wait to see, watch more of your videos. And I can't wait for the Toka Festival to come back. We're very sad about it missing this year. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, we're fingers crossed things pass soon and we can get back, get people back in the theater. Awesome. Thank Take you care. so much, Chris. Have a great day. You too.